Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Q4 and FY23 earnings conference call of Triveni Turbine Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rishabh Berar from CDR India. Thank you and over to you. Good day everyone and a warm welcome to all of you participating in the Q4 and FY23 earnings conference call of Triveni Turbine Limited. We have with us today on the call Mr. Nikhil Soni, Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Arun Mote, Executive Director, Mr. Lalit Agarwal, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. S. N. Prasad, President, Global Sales Products, Mr. Sachin Parab, President, Global Sales Aftermarket, Ms. Surbhi Chandana, Investor Relations and Value Creation, along with other members of the senior management team. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some statements made in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature, and a statement to this effect has been included in the invite, which was mailed to everybody earlier. I would also like to emphasize that while this call is open to all invitees, it may not be broadcasted or reproduced in any form or manner. We will start this call with opening remarks from the management, following which we will have an interactive question and answer session. I now request Mr. Nikhil Soni to share some perspectives with you with regard to the operations and outlook for the business. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Rishabh, uh, and a very good afternoon to all uh, people participating on this call. And welcome to the Q4 FY23 investor call for Triveni Turbine Limited. We're very happy to have you here today because it's been a record year for us and a record quarter as well. We've had the highest ever annual revenue, EBITDA, and order booking, along with a record closing order book position uh, for FY23. This all augurs very well for FY24 as well. The record revenues of 12.48 billion in FY23 was an increase of 46.4% year over year, while EBITDA for the year stood at 2.76 billion rupees, which was higher by 43.9% year on year with a margin of 22.2%. The profit after tax for the year was at 1.93 billion, an increase of 57.7% year on year after adjusting for the exceptional income in the previous year. We also had the highest ever annual order booking of 16.05 billion financial year, an increase of 35.6% year over year, which led to a record outstanding carry forward order book, 31st of March 2023, of 13.28 billion rupees, an increase of 36.9%, which again, as I said, augurs very well for the financial year FY24. The company has also, uh, during the course of the year, uh, had two schemes by which it has paid back capital and equity to shareholders. One was through a buyback, and the other was through a dividend. The buyback was to the extent of 190 crores during the year, which including taxes and um, other charges, uh, total about 240 crores, including a dividend of 50 crores. The total payout to shareholders was in the extent of about 290 crores for the financial year. The return on capital employed was 32%, and the return on invested capital, excluding cash on book, was over 250%. The, the company has uh, a stable cash uh, portfolio of 6.71 billion rupees, which is down by 11.5% based on the outflows that we've had during the year. But the cash accumulations for the year have been fantastic. We again have had a higher free cash flow than our net profit. We've had, um, we've had uh, a negative working capital again for the year ended FY, uh, 31st of March, 2023. Coming to the order booking, the product order booking for the financial year increased by 22% year over year to 11.43 billion, the highest in the company's history. 
the finalizations of orders happen from all segments, from industrial customers, followed by power producers, as well as API drive turbine. The company received orders from over 27 countries as compared to 22 countries in the previous financial year. And the majority of the order booking continues to be from non-fossil or renewable energy based uh, solutions, solidifying our market position in this rising segment. We also witnessed strong contribution in the domestic market from sectors such as sugar, distillery, food processing, paper and pulp, chemicals and waste heat recovery coming from segments such as steel and cement. In the international market, the company was able to close key milestone orders in both small as well as large power ranges of turbines from regions like Europe, Africa, Central and South America, as well as North America. The overall inquiry, inquiry generation for the year increased by over 41% year over year in FY23 to over 9 gigawatts. In FY23, the aftermarket segment ex experienced an extremely strong growth owing to a significant influx of new orders. We also, as I pointed out during the course of the year, received major orders from the SADC region, which we have alluded to in the costs of other expenses, other, other expenses which are part of the notes of accounts. To reinforce its customer-centric philosophy, the company has strategically located service offices throughout India and international offices in Europe, West Asia, Southeast Asia, as well as Africa. The success of the aftermarket business is evident in the order booking and sales growth in FY23, which saw increases of 88% and 82% year over year. The aftermarket contributed to 29% of order booking for the year, up from 21% in FY22, and the company is confident that this segment will continue to provide a significant share of its overall growth in the coming years. During the year, the company continued its growth both in the domestic and export sales. However, export sales reported a relatively higher increase of 121% in the current year. And the export sales, as you would, as you would know, uh, would be based on the order booking that we had in FY22, as well as the book and bill that we had in part of Q1, as well as part of Q2 of FY23. And as a result, the contribution of exports in total turnover has increased to 45% in FY23 versus 30% in FY22. Exports are a, are a core focus for the company as we believe a significant part of our long-term growth will be derived from our initiatives in the international market. In FY23, the aftermarket segment experienced strong growth owing to an influx of new orders. And this has strengthened this segment already, but I have to admit that there is more work that we have to do on the internationalization of our efforts as well as especially our workforce. On the R&D and engineering efforts, the company's global focus and outreach are evident in its constant efforts to file for patents and industrial design registrations in various international jurisdictions while simultaneously expanding its intellectual property portfolio in India. The company has filed for IP protection in all geographies, and currently it has over 338 IPRs, which it has filed for, unique IPRs that it has filed for, up from 316 IPRs in the previous year. As far as the market update goes, and I'm sure a lot of you would be interested, we saw a degrowth in the, the total uh, international market from in excess of 12 gigawatts to about 8.8 .8 gigawatts. This was due to uh, a significant reduction in the size of the Chinese market and orders that were placed in the Chinese market for this last year, as well as a segment of gas turbine combined cycle. Both of these segments are, are, are markets that Trivini Turbine is, does not participate in. In fact, for the markets in which we do participate in, we've seen a growth in the market. And we believe that if we look at next year's data, which is calendar FY23, uh, we would see a reversion to the long-term mean of a growth in this entire market of industrial heat and power as well as renewable energy solutions. The inquiry generation, as I said, for the company increased to 41% to in excess of 9 gigawatts. This was led by a 82% increase in the export inquiry book, while the domestic inquiry book declined by about 16% year over year. We are not perturbed by this number of a decline in the domestic inquiry book, 
as the segments in which we are, are in, in, in terms of the growth that we are seeing in the domestic market, it still seems to be quite robust. Our data for inquiry book in the domestic market does not include tender-based data, which is based on government procurement, which we which is has been quite good in the last several quarters, and we believe will be very strong in this current year. Given that fact, there will be an overall growth in the domestic market as well as inquiry book if we do include government tender data. For civilian turbines, we are extremely optimistic on the on the resultant end order booking at the end of FY23, which gives us very clear visibility on the revenue that we would be able to achieve in FY24, which would be a substantial growth over FY23. With our expansion already completed, we have the capacity now to produce in excess of 300 turbines, and I'd be happy to talk more about our capacity in, during the Q&A. But, but beyond physical investment, the company has also added 20% to its workforce. We've increased our workforce by 20%, and we believe that we will be investing further into people and increasing our workforce again quite substantially in the financial year FY24 as well. The rise of the company's export and aftermarket order booking, as well as a strong carry forward order book and robust order pipeline, gives us visibility to a very solid year ahead. And both in the domestic and aftermarket, the domestic and export market as well as export uh, seem to be giving us great confidence in being able to deliver these results. With that, I'm happy to uh, take questions and hand it back to you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchdown telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have a first question from the line of Himanshu Upadhyay from O3 PMS. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, congrats on great set of uh, numbers. Uh, see, uh, one question I had was, uh, if we look at the breakup of revenue and also order booking, the aftermarket has grown at a very fast rate and even faster than the product business. Is there any amount of cyclicality in the aftermarket business or uh, we can believe that this will always no, be a steady very, business? It's, it's, no, thank you. That's a, that's a very good question. Um, if I may break uh, the, the, the question into two, three parts, uh, aftermarket comprises of uh, two distinct segments. One is parts and service for our own turbines, and the other is refurbishment, which is for third-party turbine users. Uh, the, the parts and sales for our own turbines will grow based on uh, the offerings that we have as well as the install base. And so this will grow, we would see, at a rate of which is commensurate with the product sales growth. The outperformance really happens in uh, the refurbishment segment, which is, uh, I won't say cyclical, counter-cyclical, but it's a, it's a little bit more opportunistic at this point in time. We are trying to establish uh, a, a localized presence in certain markets so that we can build confidence with the general market so that we could get less cyclicality in these refurbishment orders. So having said that, and I'll have Sachin come in here, uh, we're very optimistic that this segment of refurbishment will grow very rapidly in the years to come. Will it be to the same extent of 80% plus growth? Uh, I don't know, but we are very, uh, this is a segment that will always be high growth, and we will try to not look at this in a cyclical manner. But Sachin, would you like to provide some uh, visibility around the aftermarket business? Uh, yes, as rightly mentioned by our vice chairman, uh, the refurb business is uh, seeing better growth than the parts sales and service business. Uh, the parts sales and service business is very consistent, and our aggressive marketing efforts for the refurbishment business have started bearing fruit, and as we are expanding our presence in international markets, uh, the trend will be good. It will be a good growth rate. Uh, so the cyclic factor is not uh, going to be uh, a big factor. So it's going to be more or less consistent, maybe not such high rates of growth, 
but uh, reasonably robust double digit growth will be there okay okay and uh, one question uh, more means uh, one was on this see this uh, we are in incorporating a subsidiary okay and where we will be investing uh, 5 crores or more to uh, make triveni brand more visible so is that uh, organization or a company would be 100% owned by triveni turbine only or it would be also jointly owned by triveni enterprises so because uh, uh you know right now the 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 proposal really hasn't gone up to uh, the civil engineering board is yet uh the the point is that when we look at the export market uh for civil turbine and let's look at civil turbine only the question is that they is uh, we need to improve the recall to customers we need to improve the the branding profile of 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 civil being a, a technological leader and we find that missing so we need to support our sales and marketing efforts on the product side with general branding investments to the extent that uh, uh, the brand is generic and can be leveraged across uh, uh, more companies just makes it a little bit cheaper for civil turbine to enter into it this is a marketing effort it's a it's a branding communication effort uh, i i i think that we'd be able to provide you more data more more disclosures as and when things get finalized uh it is more of a uh, enabling um, uh, a resolution that is passed by the board to enable to allow for this investment but we provide small you suggestion in the in the one months small, to come see one small suggestion here in yeah. such a similar effort was also done by another engineering company okay where three four group companies were trying to means make a brand through all the other companies means everybody unitedly a family owned uh, organization again it, they were listed companies but then over a period of time disputes came and then the disputes came everybody is now fighting for the brand is mine brand is mine and brand is mine okay so and uh, i had a bad experience so thank you uh, we will let we'll take that as positive uh, uh, positive feedback and we try to develop systems systems already exist but i i think we'll provide you some visibility as to how how this is something that uh, uh may not be an issue for three day meter bank in the future okay okay thank you and best of luck for your future thank you so much thank you ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management is able to answer queries from all participants kindly restrict your questions to two at a time you may join back the queue for follow up questions we have a next question from the line of amit mahawar from ups please go ahead yeah hi nikhil uh, congratulations on uh, great results it's heartening to see after sales team delivering uh, some good numbers in 23 um so uh, i just have two quick question first is in the global um uh, you know uh, installed base uh, you know smaller the buyers what is our current share uh, that's question number one uh well firstly hi hi amit uh and thank you for your, your congratulations this has been a very good year um you know instead of our, what what we decided is because the, the 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 split in the market that we had of below 30 megawatts and above 30 megawatts was a little bit artificial it was desi- it was done at a point in time when uh, when we uh, um uh when we uh, didn't when, when we had a joint venture with with another party and and so it was a distinction that we could create i think from now we'll b- talk about it more in terms of small turbines and large turbines but the market share that we have in the indian market has been consistent at uh, lit- lit- about 50 or percent and that's something that we're quite con- confident of retaining the market segments in which uh, the the markets in which uh, we're getting orders from or the industry that we're getting orders from seem to be reasonably robust and our inquiry book seems to suggest that we'll be able to maintain that market share on a global uh, basis excluding india of course our market share is going to be quite small but the indian market does contribute quite significantly to the extent of approximately 20 25% of the global market so if we include the indian market in the in our total global overall market share it would still be in the region of uh and look at it from from two bases if you look at the overall market including markets in which we don't currently operate uh which may be such as uh, china japan and certain niche industrial industrial markets in terms of applications our market share should be in the region of approximately 12 to 13% 
but in the markets in which we do participate, uh, the market share will be somewhere about 22 to 24 percent. Okay, interesting. Thank you. Second and last question is: um, If we take the next two three years, the way we are committing capital, um, right, and hiring people uh, clearly for global growth. Um, is it right to assume that the end markets that we cater to, right, biomass, district heating, a process team uh, based turbines, um, uh, the more uh, business cycles go through troubled times, because this is an investment which is lower payback, right? So it will actually be promoting more industries um, to install uh, process team based businesses, and that's actually a good tailwind for us. So can I say next two, three years, the penetration opportunity for rainy? Sorry, his line is disconnected. We'll move on to the next question from the line of Harshit Patel from Equiris Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you very much for the opportunity. So my first question uh, is on the domestic cement market. So we have seen a lot of companies increasingly opting for WHR solutions, and I think we have also benefited from the same. So in your assessment, what proportion of cement capacity in India has already uh, installed WHR uh, turbines by now? And if you could highlight the same for steel industry as well, it will be very helpful. I think we've answered this question in the past as well. In steel, pretty, uh, uh, companies set up their VHC recovery at the time of their cap uh, installation, you know, setting up the business, uh, setting up the plant itself. In cement, it's an add-on. Uh, and I think at the last point, we said approximately less than 20% had actually installed this. But to come to the question that Amit had had earlier, maybe he's joined back, uh, which sort of answers your question as well as to what is, the, what is driving this, uh, this uh, demand. Uh, so Triveni Turbine is a manufactured industrial heat and power solutions as well as re decentralized renewable energy solutions. And it's important to remember when we talk about industrial heat and power that, that this cannot be generated through uh, photovoltaic or wind. You know, electricity is a very inefficient means by which to generate heat. And so uh, the, the relevance of our solution is, is, as, um, is, is, is something that, is, that the market needs. And the, and the market data supports it in the fact that the global market in this range of, of turbines below 100 megawatts has actually been growing year over year. It's been growing more so from a clear renewable energy focus. And the renewable energy focus for segments such as cement uh, also uh, highlights the need for investments into energy efficiency. Uh, based on NGT um, um, mandates which restricted certain types of fuels such as pet coke, the cost of energy for all producers, including cement, has gone up, which validates the investment into, into um, uh, energy enhancement uh, initiatives, uh, such as waste heat recovery, which ends up leading to a, uh, just a lower cost of energy for the firms. So it's a key driver of energy efficiency, the key driver of, uh, of growth in these segments, just based on high energy costs of companies. Oh, understood. So my uh, second question is on, uh, we, have, we had received large orders uh, from South Korea last year. These were for higher uh, megawatt turbines. So just wanted to check on the execution status of the same. So have we already delivered those turbines? And if yes, then are there any follow-on orders from the same customer or from the same region? That would be my last question. Uh, I'll, I'll first ask Arun to answer the question on the status of the orders, but yes, uh, Korea is a, is a repeating region where we get orders from, so Prasad can add in that, but Arun, if you could just give some visibility on the orders that we had from Korea. Uh, we have had the orders from Korea typically coming between uh, single digit orders, but at various uh, ratings. As you know, what we have declared earlier is we have a prestigious order from Hyundai Steel, which is under execution, which will be completed over next year's time. Uh, by and large, uh, we are a preferred uh, brand in Korea, and we uh, command a strong uh, market image there. As regards uh, our order status as on date, uh, we have sufficient orders to carry on, and we are well within the plans of growth that we have, which we have indicated to you earlier. Also, as regards the manufacturing capacity, 
in the current year we will be manufacturing over 200 turbines and this is also backed by sufficient subcontract capacity that we have and uh, our complete expansion uh, is done now we have no capex in the current uh, year also it will only be a regular capex that is for maintenance that's how we are positioned on the supply chain and the support for our order executions does that answer your question yes sir very well understood and thank you very much in all thank you so much thank you we have a next question from the line of amit anwani from prabhudas lilader <coughs> please go ahead hi sir thanks for taking my question uh, uh just uh, hopping on the uh, the global market which you mentioned uh, which which declined by you know from uh, i think 12 gigawatt you mentioned to 8.8 gigawatt and you said uh, largely uh, also because of the reduction uh, in chinese market so we could elaborate more are we talking this about up to 100 uh, megawatt and you know if can just throw more yes, color yes. it's it's up to 100 megawatt and for the calendar year 23 so okay 22 calendar year 22 so what do you mean by chinese reduction uh, there was just lower demand from the few orders that were placed on the chinese market i mean i i i, I don't the reason are you can get the reason as much as i can all right so uh, and second thing so you mentioned about the 9 uh, 9 gigawatt market are we talking about uh, inquiry book uh, inquiry book inquiry is, is, is book, uh, uh, that again is up to 100 megawatt right yes yes okay uh, so second question on on the after markets uh, uh, i just wanted to understand how much you know of sdc order is still pending are we in uh, in pipe uh, line for more orders to be received uh, of that kind <coughs> and uh, how much is the percentage contribution of furbished uh, you know uh, in the aftermarket uh, the percentage contribution of this uh, i i i would say it'll be about 15 20% in terms of this current order for the full year but uh, this is a this is as as we pointed out earlier we have a unique opportunity to to uh, overhaul large utility turbines and we thought that this is a great opportunity for us to expand the breadth of our services but also to establish a presence with uh, in a region uh, which is which has very poor uh, offerings for for this type of solution more than that it allows us to move up the value chain over a period of time to move from what are relatively uh a uh, poorer margin um services to a higher margin uh spares type order so i think the fact is that you will see more of these orders coming up in 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 the next quarters as well um i i think that what you should take away from it is is the fact that that this is allowing us to be more locally present with our customers uh to the extent that even though exports as a percentage of sales increased as well as aftermarket as a percentage of sales increased but our margins were largely flat um was a, was was a consequence of some decisions that we took to expand turnover more rapidly than we did uh, from the bottom line to be conscious of that but as we always said we all we anticipate our bottom line to be a pbt to be always over 20% and our efforts is always going to be in that regard in fact in this current year uh, our pressure on margins is 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 a little bit less we have uh more exports as a percentage of of sales which will which will which we will execute uh, in FY24 we have good orders on the refurbishment and aftermarket side as well and so we are quite confident of uh, of good margins in this current financial year sure and sir about the market share which you talked about 50% in domestic market what kind uh, how much gigawatt we are factoring in the domestic market size and is it up to 100 uh, megawatt or uh, 0 to 30 megawatt what exactly is it no the the i was talking about the small market where we have a market share of about 50% uh, and the overall market to start to give some visibility on the overall market in india what may our market share be yes sir yes uh, uh sir uh, uh, domestic market wise uh, we are closer to around the size of the market is uh, around 2200 megawatt uh, is a uh, market in domestic and uh, similar way uh, the market where we are operating globally 
that is around 4,500 4, megawatt is the uh, size of the market. In domestic, uh, as our vice chairman mentioned, our market share is uh, around 50%. Right, so this is 0 to 30 megawatt? Uh, 0 to 100 megawatt. It is uh, covering up to 100 megawatt. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. We have Mr. Amit Mahavar from UBS back online. Mr. Mahavar, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little sorry for this. Um, I just, uh, you know, will complete the question. Um, uh, so, assuming that, you know, uh, globally the investments uh, towards uh, biomass to treating and process team keeps going on, uh, are we, uh, you know, you know, having enough capacity both from supply chain uh, manufacturing uh, to ramp up our market share? Because, you know, we have certain advantages on cost side on after sales ramp up. So that's that's first and second is basically more uh, 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 you know yeah that's my first question yeah no uh, it's a very good question we I think we tried, I had I don't answer this while you may have logged off but uh, our expansions of uh, that we that we needed to do in in our factory in Sompur are, are complete uh, we will be producing in excess of uh, quite a bit in excess of 200 turbines in the in the next uh, financial in FY 24. Uh, and based on our, our current capacities in-house as well as with our vendors and subcontractors, we don't believe any capacity constraint uh, is an issue for us. As we've seen, we can expand our capacity within uh, eight to nine months. Um, and for the next couple of years, at least, we have no issue in terms of capacity, both um, at, at on the manufacturing end. We consistently work with our supply chain to ensure that there's ample capacity that they have for products that are required uh, uh, for the, from a balance of plant perspective. And so all of it needs to be taken into consideration while executing an order. So uh, we don't believe that capacity is a constraint in the in our supply chain. Sure. And uh, the last one quick on the API drive turbines. How have we performed and uh, how do you see that market for us, uh, you know, in last next two, three years, especially the acceptance uh, of vendors for Triveni? Thank you. Yeah, so the main question in acceptance is over. Prasad, can I ask you to provide some visibility on Amit's question? Yes, sir. Yeah. So API drive turbine market, yes, uh, uh, in previous meetings what we have shared, yes, our acceptability is quite good. We are in the approved vendor list uh, in major OEMs and uh, EPCs and the consultants approved us as uh, approved vendors for that. And uh, because our presence in the market share wise, we are on uh, lower single digits because we see this is a big opportunity available for us as going forward. But it is a time consuming process because the APA finalization approval process took a uh, time. Now what we see uh, going forward, yes, we'll be seeing this benefits of these registrations. But uh, as on today, our market share is quite uh, uh, not small in that and we see that good potential. So yes, thank you, Nikhil. Yeah. In this segment as well, Amit, and we believe that this will be a driver of growth in the years to come. Uh, more, more than that is one is the API drive turbine, but uh, we see the uh, API power gen market also it's something to be quite uh, robust. And especially in countries like India, uh, government expenditure uh, in the API segment is, is is very good, which includes uh, uh, fertilizer as well as uh, upstream, downstream oil and gas. Sure. Thank you, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. We have our next question from the line of Ashwani Sharma from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> good afternoon. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, congratulations for good setting number, sir. So my first question, first question is on the uh, growth. If you can just give us, you know, break up in terms of volume growth and price growth for the quarter. Uh, unfortunately, we don't do volume and price. We just give it in terms of uh, rupees only. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Second question is if you can, uh, you know, this uh, uh, expenses which were there, subcontracting expenses in the SADC market. So will these expenses will continue in FY24 as well? Yes, you know, so the point was these expenses uh, are literally uh, subcontracting charges for, for personnel. When you overhaul turbines, you need to have people. Um, and so as these, these contracts, we believe, are something that's quite remunerative for the company, and so they will continue. There will be growth in them as well because we anticipate growth and turnover in these distinct segments also. Um, so, uh, but but, uh, but I, I would... I would 
the, the alternative here would be to take these subcontracting charges and put them above the line and and, and then we'd have a more diluted uh, uh, gross margin. So it's, I think it's better to put it here because it reflects the business more appropriately. These are not raw material costs and these are charges which are paid for subcontracting of personnel and it reflects the cost better. The fact that it has to be highlighted through a note is the governance of it only. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah. routine business, you could imagine. It's just a fact that we have to highlight it because of the significance of the value. Yeah, yeah. So uh, third is on the guidance. If you can just give us uh, you know, some guidance in terms of uh, top line growth for FI24 and margin uh, <coughs> margin guidance, that will be helpful. You know, actually, I think we made a little bit of a mistake last year when we said that we would be growing by about 35 percent CAGR for FY 23 and 24. As you've seen, with that, our growth was significantly higher by over 45 percent in FY 23. Um, I think FY24 is starting off in an extremely robust picture. We have an opening order book which is over 35% higher than what it was on 1st of uh, on 1st of April 2022. And so we're in a much better position. The growth in order book gives you an indication of where the market will be. We have, of course, Q1 and Q2 of uh, uh, well, whole of Q1 in terms of product uh, book and bill as long as they're smaller turbines and part of Q2 also. And for, for the aftermarket, we can go all the way up to Q3 in terms of uh, book and bill. So, and the inquiry book is quite robust. So we're quite confident on the growth. In terms of pinning me down on a specific number, uh, I think it's suffice to say that the growth will be quite robust. Uh, it, 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 I, I, our earlier um, guidance is something that I'm not going to retract. It will be that at least. So that, that's, that's something that we look at. Um, margins are uh, something that really, I, like I said, there, there's no pressure on margins. Um, there's always a need for us to better it, I agree, but at this point in time, what we would rather do is take market share, get uh, more presence locally. Uh, we need to get more manpower, which doesn't pay off immediately, so that, that will be uh, adding to our overhead. So there are certain costs that will go up also, but margins is not really a concern based on the fact that we know what the, the, the margin that we've taken our orders on. We've, we've locked in a lot of our costs. And uh, so we're quite confident for the year to come. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Rakesh Roy from Omkara Capital. Please go ahead. Uh yeah, hi, sir. Uh, so my first question is regarding the aftermarket, you have mentioned two parts, like a part of services and refurbishment. So, sir, can you highlight on refurbishment market, how much of the market size domestic is normally and where we are? Uh, yeah, you know, see, the point of refurbishment is that it's a very large market, both from the sector of scope, scale, and, and value. Um, uh, so when we look at refurbishment, it is a refurbishment of, of uh, uh, rotating equipments, including steam turbines, which is where we are in OEM. And it would move anywhere from lower value addition work, such as overhaul, all the way up to upgradation and uh, um, energy um, enhancement. Uh, so, so the value chain is quite large, and it's easily undefined. What we can say is uh, uh, that approximately 50% of the market is catered to by OEMs, and 50% of the market is catered to by non-OEMs. Uh, so, so there is a significant growth possible in India. is really in undefined um, as to as to how large the market is for third-party services. You don't have many companies out there offering it on a third-party basis. But this market exists in many other places, and it's a much it's a very robust market, especially in the gas turbine space. So, if you look at the gas turbine space offering this as a third party on a third-party basis, it's quite a large market, and that's largely centered around. Uh, the more developed economies. Oh, okay, sir. That's it. Uh, sir, uh, my next question is: uh, Can you uh, uh, I give you the break off of the, your order book in which chapter we? we oh, sir. Sorry, I couldn't understand your question. Can you speak uh, a little slower? Yeah, yeah. Sir, can you share the order book break off of from which chapter we get the order? Like a like a uh, yeah, renewal. We don't give that that degree of break off because it's not relevant. I think. Uh, okay. You know the industry that we get it from, uh, yeah. and I think that, that 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 that's 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 reflective of of the fixed capital formation in the economy. Sectors such as distilleries continue to outperform, 
we uh, we see good growth there. Um, there's a good demand which is backed by the government uh, push. You have certain commodity-based industries uh, which uh, have a, have a commodity pricing upswing, which are doing well, uh, including paper. Uh, you have markets uh, on the recycling side of recycling paper as well as plastic, which are doing well. Uh, you have few orders which are very happy about which are coming through in the municipal solid waste incineration space. It's something that is that is quite uh, encouraging that that local municipalities are taking this problem seriously. You have waste heat recovery orders which are coming from uh, both cement and steel, and uh, you have orders from the chemical space as well, which is just reflective of uh, uh, demand. And in general, you also have some food food processing orders also. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Right, sir. Uh, sir, my last question is, sir, uh, sir, I try to understand, sir, uh, yes, sir uh, maybe I missed, sir, that uh, your aftermarket sale increased from 27% to 33% of revenue. Yes. Yes, year on year. But your margin is flat, EBITDA margin. So where I miss, uh, missing, sir? Yeah, like, I, like I just explained, so one of the reasons is that this uh, large uh, uh, order that we have from the SADC region, is something that is, uh, I think, overall margin diluted to the to the to the aftermarket business. But if we look at it as a company overall, uh, it's a very it's a strategic area that I think that we would like to be into uh, that allows us to move up the value chain once we are locally present in a certain area. Uh, through this through this current offering, we have uh, um, uh, over a thousand people who are subcontracted uh, through us, and so we have a very large local presence without much liability, but large local presence which allows us to uh, to um, gain the confidence of local customers. And that will pay off in many different ways. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Prolin from GMO. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Nikhil. Thanks a lot for taking my question. A couple of questions uh, from my side. Is that one, uh, in, in the past calls when we had a very robust order book, we had a visibility in terms of revenue uh, for more than a year, uh, right? Because our inquiry pipeline was also strong. Now in this quarter, you have mentioned that the inquiry pipeline, at least in the domestic market, is seeing some weakness. So uh, how important is it for our overall consolidated business for the inquiry pipeline in the domestic business to again seeing some growth, uh, right? I mean, uh, and what can you give a little bit more color on why is this weakness? Yeah, is this no, a okay. temporary? I, I don't think I was explicit enough. Even though we've seen a degrowth in the in the domestic inquiry inflow, that is from private sector. Uh, when you include uh, government tenders uh, or PSU tenders, uh, the, the market is much much higher. Uh, so, so the fact is that uh, it's just because those are binary events of winning and losing, we don't include them in our, in, in our inquiry book. But if you include that, actually the, the Indian market is, is actually quite robust. You see, uh, uh, you see um, definitely growth in the market going forward. Um, the, the, our end order book, as I suggested, has uh, nearly, um, I'm going to say about 90% of the orders uh, uh, will be executed in FY24, 10% will go on to FY25. But that's normal for any year. More than anything else, the inquiry, the, the order booking that we've had in Q1 till date, because it's already a late board meeting that we're having, is very robust, which gives us full confidence for the growth of this financial year. Sure. And uh, is this the, I mean, uh, have we in the past participated in government tenders, and uh, what could be uh, our conversion rate, uh, uh, you know, uh, for these tenders, and would this... Uh, be at a similar margin uh, uh, what uh, uh, compared to the private sector. Uh, the margins are not diluted. We don't we don't price on a differential basis. Basis uh, maybe slightly higher than regular margins, I think, uh, in the domestic market. But uh, I think we have a very good percentage of winning government tenders. But, but they aren't very often. We may bid one every couple of years or two three years something like that. Uh, Prasad, do would you like to add any color on this? Yes, sir. Uh, uh, in the government tenders, uh, yes, these are uh, large uh, scope tenders. So, yes, the margins wise, uh, there's no uh, different uh, strategy we adopt. The margins are quite good. And uh, these, these are uh, 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 on a time bound projects, what we are sometimes we see uh, sudden delays in finalization and all. That is the reason we are not considering in this uh, 9 gigawatt inquiry pipeline. 
but uh, as and when this comes uh, na into uh, na finalization phase uh, again based on uh, na the competition and all winning or losing that time we take but uh, based on the historic data whenever we participated in this tenders so we got a good success so we are hoping towards that sure. i think the other thing that, that usually we when if we participate sure sure that that's very uh, encouraging and one last question would be again on this international uh, a piece where you are saying that our visibility is slightly lower and that's why we want to probably form a subsidiary which can probably help us uh, increase our brand presence uh, so is there any particular niche segment where our visibility is lower because what i would have thought is that in typically a b2b business you would have to probably execute a few orders through our metal and then probably we will get no, uh, uh, the no, no, visibility is a different different problem than uh, than than branding and perception uh visibility is the issue of being able to be close to the customer to make sure that you are able to uh, to get an inquiry out of him that is a physical sales led effort which is backed by agents to be able to provide that visibility the intangible of uh, being able to have a better perception is something that we need to we need to work on from a branding perspective but we need to do it at a low cost and something that we think will be uh, uh manageable and controllable by the company Sure. So, is it? It's not any different than any market. Uh, Mr. Prolin, sorry, but your voice is sounding muffled. Sorry. I'm sorry. We are not able to hear you. We'll move on to the next question from the line of Devang Patel from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. On the overseas business that we have, uh, could you give some more color? on what is the contribution we get from different regions or continents or maybe developed markets versus yeah the, the nature of the of the of the product is that it is customized so it is customized from a performance perspective it's it's customized from a order scope perspective also so the scope would can include and exclude certain things based on what the how the customer is looking at it uh in general uh um more the more developed the market the higher the specifications and the higher the specifications the higher the margins the the less developed the market the the lower the specifications and the lower the margins this is the generic not only i think to our business but to every business and so you can see from orders to orders and certain industries also are different so for example uh, uh, a high tech industry in india would give you the same margins but a low a low technology industry in india would give you low margins from it would it be different from uh, uh, a low technology business internationally it, it's more comparable industry to industry uh, in terms of the technology deployment than it would be from geography to geography but geography also gives us uh, a good estimation um, the fact is that uh, in europe we see demand coming from areas such as uh, solid municipal waste incineration and and uh, uh, renewable energy where the end product the end demand from the customer is is our production and so when efficiency matters to such a large degree i think you have greater flexibility in pricing um when you when 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 it's uh, when the turbine requirement is 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 uh, more from a perspective of just providing steam to a process in a low tech industry it the 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 price is a very important factor in in considering in consideration so therefore margin the lower So thank you for that reply. I was also trying to get a sense of what is the uh, revenue contribution we get from Europe, North America versus Africa or South America, developed versus uh, less developed countries. Yeah, so you know, unfortunately, we don't give that data because it changes so consistently every year. Like like I told you, we sold to 27 markets last year and 22 the year before. We have a total install base in over uh, 75 plus countries, and we've sold turbines in over 80 plus countries. So you know, very frankly. it's difficult for us to certain anything out of it and so we are sort of reluctant to give that information out because we don't think it to be meaningful okay generally when we say we have a lot of headroom for growth in our export business uh, from which you know area will which continent will this come from uh, in general where the where the, the size of the economy is determine the capacity of for fixed capital formation and you know our product fits fits into uh, the fixed capital formation part of uh, the, an economic growth so 
uh, the larger the economy, the larger the contribution to our inquiry book. The, but the confidence we get is because our inquiry book is somewhere in excess of 9 gigawatts, uh, this provides us ample opportunity for us to approach it. And significant portion of it, of course, as you'd imagine, is from the export market. And so that's our confidence that we get from, from go, for growth. Right, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Bimal Sampath, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, uh, a few months back we were talking about super critical turbines and also we were looking at another a similar or an adjacent product line. Now that uh, I am seeing that uh, we are doing very well in refurbishment and API turbines which is a very vast market and we are it is very profitable. So are we now going to concentrate on these two markets before looking at anything else for the next two, three years? Just one question. You know, you're right on one aspect. The fact is that we're seeing good growth and so our priority is to capture that first. Uh, is, is Are these developments and product developments that, that we've talked about, are they put on the back burner? Uh, uh, no, not at all. Uh, it's, it, these are something that we continue to, to, to invest in. They just don't take prominence because there's, I think, much more uh, immediate efforts that we that 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 will reflect on results more uh, in, the, in the short one two three year time frame. Uh, these these product developments will go into the market. They're already being piloted in different ways. Some some technologies have. Uh, um, I say a, a, a more of a, some, somewhat of a cost proposition, but those are things that will get sorted out over a period of time with volume. But in general, uh, they've not been, they're not dropped off the list. It's just a question that from a priority perspective, they just don't make it to our highlights of talking on these calls. Okay, thank you. So, and uh, next, so next two, three years, no major capex will be there because, I mean, your capacity is sufficient for... Uh, these, uh, no, these, these, the thing is that, like we've always said, and I said, alluded to in my opening remarks, that uh, I think our internationalization is uh, is not as quickly as it should be. We are getting international orders, but inter the internationalization of the company is is a little slower than what we'd expected. And so, to that extent, the that we can be closer to customers, we are going to continue to push for that. Uh, would that require capex? Possibly. Uh, how much and what we'll of course come back to you after taking through the board. But as you could see from our investment in South Africa, these are not significant investments and pay back quite quickly. Right, right. Now you have got a very good uh, market and a very good sector. Congratulations and all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have a next question from the line of Amit Anwani from Prabhudas Diladar. Please go ahead. This small question on on uh, exports. Obviously, you highlighted about uh, a lot about it. What can we target uh, as a sh uh, share contribution from export? And second thing, you mentioned about penetrating into new geographies. So, if you could just you know throw some more color on with geographies and what kind of industries we are looking into these geographies or megawatt or something on that. Um. Sure. Let me take a second question first, the way I understood it. Uh, the, the geographies that, that I think are very attractive to us are the geographies that are growing, which is essentially uh, North America and Southeast Asia. Uh, we, see, we see, for our segment of growth, we see something like the Inflation Reduction Act being a real propellant for growth in the, um, in the renewable energy space, something that we would uh, like to, uh, to have a good share in in terms of the products that are sold um, and the demand. Similarly, with Southeast Asia, the demand would be driven not only in terms of renewable energy, but also for uh, industrial capex. And uh, we think that we'd like to be part of that. Um, so your first question was? Target export. Target export. You know, if you look at it, that um, over 70% uh, over of our inquiry book is from the export market. Uh, that gives you an indication as to where our growth will be going forward. We need, to, of course, from a margin perspective, it's much better. Uh, we we think that it's important for us to have a high market share in India, and we'll always take that so as to ensure that we have 
good control over our supply chain and cost, stru cost structure, and also keeps us very grounded in terms of pricing and allows our engineering to continuously uh, value engineer to take costs out. Um, so from the export market, as a percentage, uh, with, I think we had 45 odd percent in our order booking uh, in turnover. Um, I, I would think that uh, um, that was pushed significantly by the refer by the uh, overall order that we had from uh, uh, the, from Southern Africa. But going forward, we would anticipate uh, in excess of 50% in, in the short in the medium term and in the longer term, significantly higher than 50% coming from the international market. Sure, sir. Thanks. Sir, uh, uh, if you could just also mention how much number of turbines we did in FY23 versus FY22, if that is possible for you to share. Uh, so, Arun, would you have that data? Uh, yeah, we have produced about 190 turbines. And mm -hmm. uh, some of them were, were uh, recognized as a revenue, others were in transit. And this is uh, how much? A lot of inventory which is in transit. Yes. Sure. And this is how much uh, versus FY22 percentage wise? Uh, it would be roughly about 70 80% more. In uh, FY22, we made 116 turbines. Great. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, please press star and one on your phone now. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for participating in our conference call. Uh, we've had a record year uh, in every manner. The team has worked very hard, and um, we are we anticipate another record year in in FY24. And we look forward to engaging again with you at the Q1 results. Goodbye. Thank you. On behalf of Triveni Turbine Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. <laughs>